to Follow Me Friday with Joan and Priya. You're a thinking potatoes? I know, it's like. It feels weird I still kinda, saying that. I know, that. we're supposed to say globally connecting thought leaders blah, 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 blah. and educational and It takes way, way too long. Welcome to our latest episode of Summer in the City with Joan and Priya. And we are on set at Keller Williams we're on so 6th Avenue and 44th Street, home of our friend, Laura Cook. Yay. Fabulous realtor. Yes. Realtor. Licensed oh. real estate salesperson. And she keeps saying realtor. I'm like, it's a longer name. It's like four words. I know, it's more sexy. She wants it like abbreviated. Sexy like she wants Laura. To shop it. So how was your week? My week is it's weird. It's getting more done in yeah. a in a more substantial and focused and deep way. Yes. And what? Three new clients <laughs> this week. Not everybody can Three relive. That's awesome. new clients this week. Uh, we just got a large client in Massachusetts. Biggest contract we've ever had. This is what we care about. We care yes. about building each other and mm -hmm. building others. Yes. So that's why we're here. Exactly. So it was your son's birthday. Yes, he turned 17 and we spent the day at the beach yesterday with his friends and we had so much fun. And you made wings. And we made a hundred wings. Did you make So wings? are you ready for our guest? I am. Yes? Yes. Okay, so let's bring her on. Let's bring her on. Right. And we're back. And we are so excited that today we are at the Keller Williams Midtown headquarters. I'm yes. gonna call it right. Mm -hmm. yes. Totally the headquarters with hostess with the mostess, Miss Laura Cook. Hi, Hello, thank you. We're so excited to have you. Yes. Yes. So we know Laura for many years now mm -hmm. and she hosts our events and in fact, this week we hosted an event with her and it's so exciting because yeah. it's part of what we're wearing today. Yes. yes. The Queen Bee. Okay. So Laura hosts us monthly. We host events here every month. It's a phenomenal space. Mm -hmm. She's an amazing human being in addition yes. to being an amazing businesswoman. Mm -hmm. She's oh, won numerous she's awards at Keller Williams. Like, <laughs> Why don't you just travel with me and tell, sure. tell all the people? I'll be your PR <laughs> person. I love it. I love it. And I've stayed here all summer working, uh -huh. working, working because you know, a lot of people are like, Hamptons, yeah. going to the beach. And I'm like, no, people need apartments. <laughs> you gotta get, we gotta get the houses, gotta yeah. get, get yes. the apartments, not the houses yes. as much, but the condos, the co-ops, the yeah. thing. So yeah. it's it's been crazy. And I just launched my BNI chapter last week officially. <gasps> Yeah. Wait, so B&I 19. Wow. B&I 19. Nice. Yes. I love it. Yes. That is, that is quite so an you're the president. to be able to do that. I am the president of this esteemed Hot group. shot. Yes. Yes. <laughs> it took it took about a year and a half, really, from soup wow. to nuts, the whole wow. thing. And Full disclosure, I actually, before I met her, knew her uh -huh. because she was a genius marketing and brander. She took a picture of herself in a blue shirt with her fun, beautiful, bright blue eyes, and it was on a postcard in my building. Oh, and I would yeah. see this and I'd said, wow, this is really good because this card stands out. Mm -hmm. And then I come here to an event and boom, she's standing right there. I go, I know you. <laughs> like, you mean it wasn't one of those Joni verse things? <laughs> <laughs> I know she knows she's everybody. Like, I'm, you know, she thinks she knows me. Oh, no, although I do she have to say, say I was so thrilled that someone looked at the postcard and saw my picture and then would make the connection. Yeah. Oh, got it. She got made, it. she put it together. All right, so why did you get started? Well, I actually have been doing this now for going on over five years. Uh -huh. And my previous career was in musical theater. And I had been working, 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 doing and the auditions. And you know that so makes sense with your personality. You're <laughs> oh, yeah. so bubbly. People are like, oh yeah, okay, I see that. You can I, sing. Like she can make. I, up well, a yeah. Song I, I, I mean, like that's my thing. Like, can we put you on the spot? Do a little like you Memories must from take the A train. You know, go to Harlem and buy a property for me. <laughs> that's genius marketing. Yes. You could be the singing realtor on you Instagram. Must. Do you want to be my backup dancer? Do you want to just like come behind me and I do you know, man. yeah, the fly girls instead of the fly girls. <laughs> We're the real girls, like the yeah. real estate girls. Yeah. All right. I think <laughs> buying new home is scary or renting oh, is scary. Yeah. It's always know. yeah, especially in New York because yeah. it's quite a process. Yeah. And and getting back to the question in terms of you know how I got into the business, mm -hmm. I've been working in real estate now for five years, but before that, doing all this musical theater, I love the collaboration of it. Aww, mm -hmm. Yeah. And so I wanted to try something new. I was mm -hmm. at a point in my life where I was like, okay, I just turned 30, like what's going on? And I just got off Disney Cruise Line. You were working there? I was working on Disney Cruise Line. I played, yeah, I played all the villains. Fun. I played the evil queen and I played the evil stepmother. Uh -huh. And I think it's mostly because I have a very good evil laugh. 
Let me, oh, let's hear it. You ready? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit, that's really good. <laughs> Do you have a tip for our listeners and our viewers when they're looking for a property here in New York City or anywhere? Well, I mean, number one, obviously hire an agent. Yes. There's a reason we're here is to help. And a lot of times they think first time home buyers don't realize that the agent's commission is paid by the seller. Right. Oh. So yeah. they, so they, they, think they, have to pay out they think they have to pay out of pocket for the service and they, yeah. they don't. It's actually a courtesy to the buyer and we, we co-broke and truthfully yeah. as a listing agent, when I'm selling a property, yeah. I'm so much happier when somebody's represented mm -hmm. because I don't have to deal with the wrangling of that client because I'm there to represent the seller when I'm selling a place mm -hmm. and I give them yeah. a disclosure that says, I'm the seller's agent. I'm here to negotiate for the seller. Yeah. So I think it's always best to have somebody in your corner. Uh, handling the transaction. So does the commission get split between you the two? You split it, which okay. I'm more than happy to do. Okay. In New York, you have a lot of people it's who they buy into it their is. property when it went co-op and they've owned it for maybe 20 years. And this is the first time they're actually going through a sales transaction ever, right. even though they own their property. Mm -hmm. I have a couple clients like that right now. Mm -hmm. And so it, you really do want to know that somebody's in your corner and they know what's going on and that they have your best interest at heart. And automatically we've done it so many times that we know what to anticipate. Yeah. I think that every real estate agent should sell or, or buy something every five years, just to remember what it felt like when you're yeah. going through it. Um, because I had been a renter. I'd been in a rent stabilized apartment. Yeah. When I moved to the city, it was all I could afford. I was literally just trying to make ends meet as an actor. Mm -hmm. And so I was in this tiny little rent stabilized apartment that I paid. You probably oh. loved it though, I'm oh, sure. It was fine. It was, it was my thing. I paid $900 a month for that oh, little What? Apartment. It was crazy. Oh yeah. My God. I moved here when the economy had like bottomed, bottomed out. out. Um, in 2009. Yeah, so they were like, here, take this apartment. You can rent it for nothing. And I'm like, I will do that. I don't have a job. They're like, sure, I'm an actor. we'll rent to you. <laughs> How can our viewers or listeners get in touch with you? Oh, well, you can reach out to me on uh, all kinds of social media, but I mean, you can literally just email me um, my or call. My email is lauracook at kw.com. Or the best thing is just to literally shoot me a text or uh, give me a phone call mm -hmm. on my cell which is 917-935-8140. Turn that into a jingle. <laughs> <laughs> or you can find her performing at a local townhouse yes. and general yes. house in your neighborhood. I will test the resonance to make sure that it it, it sings. Yeah. Uh, oh, <laughs> that's a great idea. If you go into the big townhouses, they have beautiful idea. resonance. Yes. I like oh, that. Yeah. Wow. I can do the, you know, the high notes to make sure it, it reverberates. Well, why don't you take it out with take us out with a high note? A little uh yeah. <laughs> oh, <shit. laughs> I like the corner of my mind. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay, we won't go there. But the other one is, how does the other one go now? Now I can't even think of the cat's memories. Yeah, I can't still try. The, the great, the, and then she does that. You know, Andrew Lloyd yeah. Webber writes like um, he writes songs that go all the way name? low and all the way high. And it was Betty Buckley. Betty Buckley. So Betty she Buckley. just. I don't know any of this. Stuff. Yeah, she's yeah. going like. Betty Buckley. Buckley. Okay, like, you may. Did you ever watch Eight Is Enough? Yes. That was the mom. Oh. Betty Buckley. She was okay. a former Broadway, humongous star on Broadway. Wow. I don't know that. One of my clients takes classes with her. Oh, she's fabulous. Yeah. Thank yeah. You. Love her. Well, thank you so much for being our guest today. <laughs> thank, thank you, you. Laura. Thank you, Sophie. Yay. Hi. And welcome to Follow Me Friday with Joan and Freya. And we're like stopped because we don't have our tag <laughs> We're on our next segment. We're on our so next blah, blah, segment. Blah, blah. Segment. Blah, blah, blah. And why are we wearing this? We are not Beyonce. We are introducing. <laughs> this is Mercy a Hernandez. Launch. Yes, thank you. It's Mercy thank and so I much. and two other women founded mm -hmm. the Edge Charitable Foundation in 2007. So she's here in Miami for a big day. In Miami? No. Uh, my, oh, I'm we're not in Miami. Miami. My brain is in Miami. Right. Because it's 105 degrees. <laughs> so she thinks she's in Miami. <laughs> we are launching Queen Bee's New York, and Mercy's here for the big event. There we go. <laughs> the Edge is a nonprofit organization that began in Miami in 2007, and we help disadvantaged and victimized children. To date, we have impacted over the, the lives of over 25,000 children worldwide. What inspired <clears throat> you to start this? I what drove you? I would say first, our children, mm -hmm. um, and second, it was just the planet itself. We just really wanted to, as corny as it sounds, we really wanted to leave the world a better place. How did you meet? So she owned a preschool in Miami called Old Cutler Academy. Mm -hmm. And uh, my kids needed a preschool and 
I brought my kids there. Mm-hmm. I cornered her. Oh, I didn't corner you, you but did. I, yeah. I'm sure <laughs> you did. Totally cornered her. Right. Style. So I asked her a trillion questions, and yes. I'm, I, she told me afterwards, she's like, you know, I thought you were crazy, one of those crazy like, moms. Please don't leave your children here. <laughs> and then we became really good friends. Yes. Uh, we started a parent teacher com- uh, parent teacher committee. Cool. Yeah, and then we started the Edge through the school. Mm-hmm. And what was the first thing you did with the Edge? So we transformed our preschool or my preschool at the time into an eco-friendly preschool. Oh, which that's turned, very cool. It was cool. It was the first preschool in the United States to be a green preschool. Yeah, that's amazing. So we received that's the flag yeah. from Washington. Uh, and so we realized, okay, that really worked. Mm-hmm. And the parents started getting really involved. And the children were in turn telling the parents what to do. Like, mom, you need to turn off the light. Mom, that's recyclable. Mom, don't do that. Yeah. Or dad. Uh, And we realized, oh my God, we have something here. So when we started The Edge, it was based Mm -hmm. on environmental awareness. Correct. Our first big humanitarian project came Mm -hmm. from a school in India, Sunil's home. Right, an orphanage. An orphanage in Mm -hmm. India. And they took on our curriculum that we had written, the green curriculum that we had written, Mm -hmm. and they implemented it. And then we found out they needed all this stuff. So we had this huge toy drive, Mm -hmm. one of the biggest high schools in Miami, Coral Coral Gables. No, Coral Reef High School. Coral (laughs) Coral Coral Reef Reef High School. (laughs) And we uh, filled up a whole container worth mm-hmm. of goods that lasted them over five years. Wow. They shared it with the community. Cool. We're mm-hmm. talking about bikes, books, clothes, food, mm-hmm. tons of great stuff. Mm-hmm. And um, the kids the kids were a huge part of us at that point. Mm-hmm. And then it snowballed. Then we had Nicaragua, Guatemala, yeah. Jamaica. And our, our biggest, I think our biggest impact, that one that kind of put us on the map, yeah. at the time was with Payless. Yes. So oh, yes. Payless gave us a grant Mm-hmm. which gave us 707 gift cards of $20 a piece. Oh, mm-hmm. fantastic. So we had to take those to um, to a school that was a, a, a needy preschool at the time. It yep. was a Head Start program mm-hmm. for preschoolers yep. in Puerto Rico. Yes. So we went, and I will never remember yeah. that we went to the... Um, Forest, the rainforest. Oh, the rainforest. You and Raquel, Me and Raquel remember jumped all in the water stuff, all and with we, our clothes. They hiked with their clothing <laughs> that they were wearing to the oh airport. My God. Jeans, and heels. I had chocolates. Oh, it was a nightmare. <laughs> and then they were so good. So good time. We made some great wow. memories. I was in the rainforest with little like yes. little tiny heels, like. Yeah, it was. We, well, that we was made good some to memories. Keep, yeah, to keep your footing. That's it actually was, not a bad idea. Fun. Fun. Yeah. That's and awesome. And Raquel, my yeah. oldest daughter who was with us, stopped. She decided I can't do this anymore. So we kept going and we remember the couple. We told the couple, there's a girl way back there sitting with red shoes on. Tell her we're gonna wait for her up here. Make I don't her remember go. that. Yes. My yes. mother shot oh, wow. I don't remember yes. that. And I just so, remember being in the water. Yeah, it was yeah. good times. So anyway, awesome. so Payless gave us five years mm-hmm. worth of that grant. Wow. When That's they realized so that we were only supposed to get it once and then it was supposed to go to another organization. Yeah. Wow. But they loved really us so lucky. much and we had so many kids in Puerto Rico. We had about mm-hmm. 1,500 kids yes. in Puerto Rico yes. that this grant went to mm-hmm. and it was just a huge. And they waited for us every January. Yeah. Their entire town shut down. When are you guys coming down? Yeah, they had, they filled up the stadium with the kids. Aww. We had the mayor. Aww. We had Everybody. coverage. Like mm-hmm. it was music, really big. The mm-hmm. news the dancers. Fantastic. Oh, Seven years later, we rebranded completely. Okay. And instead of continuing with the environmental awareness, mm-hmm. we moved on to be more of a um, humanitarian. A humanitarian movement. That? So Queen Bees, I came up with about two and a half, three years ago. I just wanted a community of, of girls. Mm-hmm. And we started in, a, in my living room and we mm-hmm. thought, okay, well, we'll just do this. And one thing led to another. The living room wasn't big enough and it's a big living room. <laughs> and so we decided to have the Queen Bees, which became a movement after we started. We actually got organized and started this and launched it this January. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. And so our goal was to get to 100 Queen Bees by December. Okay. So in June, we were already almost at our goal. Wow. And we realized, yeah. wow, this is bigger than us. Mm-hmm. Cool. And so they were calling us from Tennessee. We had people in New York that were interested. And here we are on month seven launching. We just make things yeah. happen. Yeah. So the goal is to connect women with hearts of service, women with purpose, women okay. that want to give back and may not know how to or may not have the time to. Right? Yes. And so it's very simple. You become a member. The membership is only $125 that goes to help the children. It's so a it, donation. It's a donation mm-hmm. that's okay. tax deductible because we're a 501c3. Mm-hmm. And so it impacts five children. So right off the bat, you're doing that. Mm-hmm. Um, you get a t-shirt and you get endless events. So we have events all over the city in Miami 
we started with one event per month and now we're having three to four, sometimes five events per month. We always beautify a center that serves children oh, with needs. Yeah. So we do that every year in April. And then during Christmas time or during the holidays, we have three to four toy drives. And our biggest one has over 1,500 children wow, who come fabulous. in and we do an entire day for them. And so we work directly with agencies. So mm -hmm. the agencies we work with are agencies that help children with domestic violence abuse, mm -hmm. uh, human trafficked children, uh, children who have been either they're homeless or they're at an extreme poverty level. We have, um, I mean, you name it. Crisis. It's a child, any crisis. kind of crisis mm -hmm. or any kind of issue and they work with an agency, that's where we get our children. So that we make sure that our goods go to the children that really, really need it. Really need it, that's important. Yeah, so that's how can our listeners and our viewers find you or The Edge? Well, I think the first thing they should do is go to our website, which is theedgehelps.com, mm -hmm. or they can follow us on social media to it through any of the channels uh, at The Edge Helps. Um, and that's it. I mean, you can find us anywhere, really. Anywhere okay. you go at the Edge Helps, you will find us. Yes. Excellent. And join the Queen Bees. Yes. Thank you to our viewers. Make sure you subscribe, like, follow us on social media. Woo follow me Friday with Joan and Priya, Summer in the City with Joan and Priya, and tune in next week. Become a Queen Bee. Woo